guys, welcome back to another one of our videos where we kind of teach you guys a bit more and get you a bit more aware of what's going on and how things work and how to get in awesome shape. So as you know, we have done a video on sugar and how it affects your body and we've done one on fat and cholesterol um, also. So this one today is kind of the pinnacle of both them put together. Today is about your gut and your digestive system. Now a lot of you are going to think, oh no, this is rubbish, it's boring. It's not. This is probably one of the most fundamental things in achieving a good body and it optimally being healthy, or most importantly being healthy, this is absolutely crucial, okay? So um, without further ado, let's get cracking. Okay, first I want you to grasp how unbelievably important this is, okay? So I'm gonna spit out some few facts for you nice and quickly to give you kind of an overview of what the gut does and some of the important things that it's involved in. Okay, so your gut is your largest organ that comes in contact with the outside world. And you might think, hang on a minute, it's got my skin. Well, no, it's not. If you rolled your gut out on the floor, spread it out, it would be the size of a singles tennis court, okay? This is because it's kind of crinkled up and down, all right, a bit like this, to increase its surface area so it can take in as much nutrients as it wants. It's also considered in contact with the outside world because if you think anything you eat comes from the outside world, then goes into your mouth, all the way through, past your stomach, small intestine, large intestine, colon and out, okay? So it goes, travels through your body and only when things have been digested into their smallest form or when the body wants to accept them, will it pass through your gut line into your blood system and thus into your body, okay? So it's super important. There's a whole lot of immune stuff that goes on in there as well, obviously protect you from kind of bacteria and hazards from the outside world. Your gut has its own nervous system called the enteric nervous system, all right? So it actually has its own nervous system to control what goes on there, it's that important. So nice and simply, um, everything we eat rebuilds us, all right? You've heard that, we are what we eat, we are what we eat, we can absorb and don't excrete. You've heard all these before, okay? But it's really, really important. Your whole body breaks down and starts again anew. So if you're not feeding it with correct stuff, it's not gonna come back optimally and healthy. This is in, in my head why I think a lot of cancers and stuff come along when you're eating stuff that's full of chemicals and stuff that isn't good for your body, your body doesn't recognize. Of course, when stuff's kind of being resynthesized, made again, it's gonna be made incorrectly and you're gonna start having issues. So you have a lot of neurotransmitters in your brains. These are basically chemicals that send signals to make your body um, do a certain reaction. It might be to keep a homeostasis, to keep a balance, or it might be to elicit a different response. But 80% or roughly 80% of your serotonin is found in your gut. Your serotonin basically is a neurotransmitter that um, makes you relax, makes you feel sleepy, makes you calm down, okay? So that kind of links your gut to your, um, what we call your parasympathetic nervous system. All right, so we're gonna spin off a little bit in here just to show you guys something. So guys, particularly, you finish your workout, you're like, I've gotta have my protein shake now. I've got 15 seconds to get this protein shake in. That's not really the case, all right? So when you're working out, you're going to what we call your sympathetic nervous system. So this is when fight or flight, okay? So think, oh, I've either got to run away or I've got to fight. So the body goes, right, it raises cortisol, it gets a little bit stressed, it sends blood to your muscles, to your heart, to your working muscles that's gonna help you perform, okay? So when you think, when you're working out, I've got eyelash falling in my eye, all the blood's going to your muscles, all right? There's not, there's not much around your gut area. So consuming a protein shake straight away isn't necessarily gonna get digested that efficiently straight away. So what a lot of people tend to do now, and I'm quite a, I'm quite a big fan of, is like having a pre or an intra workout shake. So I have something intra workout, so it's already digesting. And then after my workout, I can just toodle my way home and have my dinner. So when people say I've got a gut feeling, you now know why, because you're Gut is very, very closely linked to your parasympathetic and your sympathetic nervous system. When you're, when you know, when you're a bit nervous, you're a bit edgy. Sometimes you get upset tummy. There you go. So there's some really quick things about how important the gut is, guys. I can't, cannot explain enough. You can spend a whole day explaining how important it is and the amazing stuff it does. There's like perform wild, some good friends of ours who are incredible gut stuff. Who I learned a good deal of this from, to be fair. Um, told me a couple of things the other day, they told me there is more gut, there's more gut bacteria in your gut than there are known stars in the sky. And I'm sorry if I get the weight wrong on this, but I think there's 15 pounds of bacteria in your gut. I'm pretty sure that's right. So there's a quick overview of some of the stuff that happens in the gut. So now I wanna talk about some of the symptoms or problems we have with the gut. So let's start off nice and easy. Okay, so you can have a dysbiosis. All right, all this means is an imbalance in bacteria. You have a lot of bacteria in your gut to help you out, okay? You have good bacteria and bad bacteria. Problem is, which a lot of people have, is if your bad bacteria is kind of out of proportion with your, uh, with your good bacteria, so you've got raised bad bacteria. Um, you can have a lot of symptoms by this, but this is called dysbiosis, basically. So people might look to change their diet and bring in probiotics and stuff like that to improve their gut flora, their bacteria. So things you might notice if you've got dysbiosis is um, you might have a biofilm on your tongue. So if you open your mouth like the back of your 
your tongue kind of be a little bit off colour, it might be a little bit white, a little bit greeny, and your breath will probably smell quite bad. So if you're constantly getting that, that's probably a good sign that your um, bacteria is kind of out of whack a bit lower down. All right, let's move on to one that's slightly more serious, but still very, very common, um, is a leaky gut syndrome. All right, so what this kind of happens is basically you abuse your gut line and you're abused by eating bad foods um, and other issues, inflammation and stuff like that, and you'll get tiny little holes in your gut line. And basically this allows food to pass through which is not fully digested. So ideally you want stuff to go down to its smallest molecule, you might get two or three molecules parts of food floating freely in the bloodstream. The body doesn't want to do that, it doesn't want it there. So what it will do, it will do an autoimmune response. So basically it will tell the body to attack that and break it down. Problem comes, okay, is if you've got something like whey protein, and whey protein is floating around your body undigested or not fully digested, the body's gonna attack it. But whey protein has the same amino acid profile as the beta cells in your pancreas. So then you're gonna start attacking your pancreas as well, and this is what's called an autoimmune disease. There's lots of them. There's like um, rheumatoid arthritis can come from it, um, psoriasis, all these things, just because your body's attacking something there that it thinks is a foreign body, which is, because it's not fully digested, but it has, this, it has like a match kind of profile to to a certain part of your body. So that's something that you really need to look out for. Another one is stress, all right? Stress can be a real pain in the ass. It's also quite important, okay? You really need to learn to control stress, okay? Stress will raise your cortisol. It'll wake you up in the morning. It will make you prepare to, to fight or to run or to compete, okay? Um, fight and flight stuff is there for a very, very important reason. Hence why you also have the, uh, the parasympathetic nervous system to calm you down. Problem is, is when people are chronically stressed. They are stressed all the time. They're stressed in the car. They're stressed because they've got to get to work on time. Work's a stress. They're not eating great anyway. And all this stuff, like I said earlier, is going to divide the blood away from the organs that you want to be digesting, which is not going to help you in getting kind of control of yourself on how you're eating and stuff. So that's a quick overview of some of the symptoms that you have from the gut. So how do I keep my gut healthy? And by the way, keeping your gut healthy is going to really improve your chances of staying nice and lean and just being in control of your body, having comfort, you know what I mean? Not needing to go to the loo every two minutes. For example, you have a thing called a transit time. You should probably go to the number two, maybe two or three times a day. So I know people don't go for weeks. I'm like, what are you doing? You need to get this sorted, okay? So you should roughly go, um, say if you eat in the morning, that food should roughly be past 12 to 14 hours afterwards. Don't worry if it's an hour or so either side. But if you're taking a long time and you're not passing it, okay, it's sitting in your colon where you should just reabsorb water and electrolytes, you potentially reabsorb toxins that you've tried to get rid of. If it comes through super fast, then you're probably not going to absorb the stuff you want from it in the first place, okay? So you're looking for kind of a happy medium. So there's lots of things you can do to um, look after your gut. If it's gone for, for like a certain stage, you've got colitis or something like that, then you need to seek the advice of a professional. Like I guess said, the guys that perform wild are absolutely incredible at that. Um, but there's things you can do like a glutamine profile. So glutamine is an amino acid that people think is, is great for muscle building. If you have an empty stomach, it's also quite good at help repairing your gut lining. Um, you want to avoid foods that cause inflammation. So if there's something that you don't get on with, if you've got a problem with gluten, if you've got a problem with lactose, whatever it may be, you're going to try and avoid that food. Try and avoid trans fats. Um, and just have, you know how to eat a balanced diet, guys. We've explained this tons of times. But your gut is so unbelievably important to your health. I cannot explain enough how important it is. It's incredibly important. So I hope this was just kind of a brief overview of the gut for you and some things that you really want to consider if you're trying to get healthy, optimal, or if you're trying to get healthy most importantly, but if you also want to get in great shape, your gut is where you need to start looking. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. I love you all and I'll see you soon. So the next one is